Okay, so once again, Shavua Tov, everyone. Welcome to our weekly Shir on Parsha. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to Raya and Mordechai. Uh, basically, they are the ones that are making this all possible. You can follow us on YouTube on Chabad of Rechavia. There are lots and lots of very special Shiurim there on our channel. Today is Yudzayin Betamuz, the 17th day of Tammuz. And throughout history, Actually, the Gemara mentions five bad things that happened to Am Yisrael. The Luchot were broken by Moshe Rabbeinu. And uh, um, a few other things, the Romans basically, uh, um, uh, they used to bring uh, all kinds of, uh, usually they used to bring uh, um, korbanot, sacrifices. And this day, uh, it was Yom Shenish Tabrubo, uh, Hachomot also. A few things mentioned in our history. But we're going to talk about the Parsha today. And um, our Parsha has a very interesting story that can also teach us something for life, something very important about judging other people. And we know that the three weeks generally are a lot about improving in Ahavas Yisrael, in loving someone else, free love, Ahavat Chinam, because the temple was destroyed because of Sinat Chinam, free hate, and we are going to fix it. We are going to try to see how to fix that and try and see it in our parsha. So our parsha is uh, uh, it's basically... Uh, right after the end of the previous parsha, where it talks about the story, Am Yisrael uh, started to take wives from Moab, which were, they weren't a part of the Jewish nation. And that was a big problem. That was a big problem. That was actually the suggestion of Bil'am. Bil'am gave his last suggestion to try and uh, influence Bnei Yisrael to do the wrong thing was to send your daughters and cause Am Yisrael to sin. And Am Yisrael was, were tempted. A lot of them sinned. Uh, uh, a lot of them sinned. And Moshe Rabbeinu did not know the halacha. What to do? What happens? What do we do to such a person that goes and uh, uh, basically marries a non-Jew. So it's a very interesting uh, a din, and the din is Haboyel Aramis Kanoim Poigimboy. So the only way that you could actually uh, uh, deal with such an Isser, such a forbidden thing, is if you a Kanoi. What is a Kanoi? Someone that really feels Hashem in his heart and he cannot understand how could it be possible that these people are not doing 100% what Hashem wants. That is the only way that we could actually, uh, that, that you could actually punish mm -hmm. the people that sinned. Not everyone can really, uh, can really uh, um, carry out this punishment. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu himself he did not know this din. He did not know this law that if someone um, marries or, or, or makes a strong contact with a non-Jewish woman, kanoi, the translation is someone that's jealous. But we don't mean jealousy in, in a bad way. We mean the positive side of jealousy that he really uh, is connected to Hashem and that's why he cannot bear, he cannot stand anyone that is not uh, following Hashem 100%. So our parish, we talk about the reward. After that story, that story was in, la, in the last parish where Pinchas kills the head of the tribe of Shimon. It's not just an ordinary person. The head of the tribe of Shimon basically brought this girl and asked Moshe Rabbeinu, can I marry her? And Moshe Rabbeinu did not know what to say. He said, of course not, but he did not know how to explain this whole idea. And Pinchas noticed that he saw that and he killed them both. Okay. Um, 
there was a bit of politics well, they within the tribes, and they started to judge Pinchas. Pinchas was the one that did this, and they started to judge him, and they said that this was an act of cruelty. This wasn't an act of positive uh, jealousy. It wasn't something that had to do with a good nature, with the better side of Pinchas, that the, the rumor was that it had to do with some kind of nature that Pinchas had that was not a good nature. This is hinted in the first words of our parsha. Our parsha is by Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Akan by Daber Hashem and Moshe Demer. Pinchas, the son of Elazar, the son of Aharon, the great Kohen. Why do we need to mention the father of Pinchas, the grandfather of Pinchas? We mentioned that previously in the last parsha. What is the idea? Why do we need to mention the fathers of Pinchas? What is the idea behind showing us the family tree of Pinchas? So apparently there were rumors going around in the Machane, in, amongst Am Yisrael, saying that Pinchas is also a grandson from his mother's side of Yisrael. Pinchas's mother was the daughter of Yitro. This person, Yitro, wasn't such a good person. He tried out all kinds of uh, idol worshipping. Um, he worshipped idols in many ways. And there was one special way that he used to worship idols. He used to feed a, a goose and serve it, sacrifice it to Avada Zara. That is the rumor that was going around. And therefore they said, you know what, Pinchas, he is not doing this because he really cares about Hashem because he has this positive sense of jealousy. It is because his cruel nature. Where does this cruel nature come here? So the truth is, that the cruel nature could come from Yisroi. Because Yisroi, in a certain way, was a cruel person. Feeding a lot to a, a, a goose in order to shecht it for Avodah Zorah, that's very cruel. And that's why, by the way, uh, it's not so easy to find, uh, um, or today, I mean, uh, um, I think it's goose liver or something like that, that is, um, uh, a lot of people don't want to eat it because it involves cruelty towards the goose. You're feeding it, forcing it to eat, stuffing it with food, and it doesn't even want to eat, and that is very cruel to do. So that's what the tribes were all talking about. They were telling, basically, they were telling uh, uh, themselves, they were talking about it, that this, this guy, Pilcha, seems like a real uh, um, a, a strong believer person that has a strong connection to Hashem, but it might come from another place. It might come from another source. It might come from his grandfather. His grandfather was Yisroi. His grandfather was, cru was cruel. And that's why the Pasuk tells us, Pinchas ben Elazar ben Ara and Akain, he had a different grandfather. Not only Yisroi was his grandfather, Aharon too was his grandfather. What is so special about Aharon? His love to every single Jew. We know that the amount of time that Am Yisrael cried after the passing of Aharon was way longer then after the passing of Moshe. How could that be? Moshe was the leader of the Jewish people. But Aharon was the leader in the sense that he was connected to the people and he always to make peace. The stories in the Midrash, the Midrash tells us, right, Aaron would come to one after the fight and would tell him, you know what, this friend of yours just told me 
that he totally understands you. And he's very sorry for what he did. He did not mean to get into such a fight. But he's a bit embarrassed to, to go and tell you, uh, I'm sorry, and to try and make up. But you should just know that. And Aaron used to go to that the other friend that was in the same fight and he used to tell him the exact same thing. Your, fr your friend wants to make peace with you. He didn't mean to do such a bad thing. He did not uh, uh, want to develop into such a thing, but he's just shy. He doesn't want to come over. And that's how they basically ended up understanding that they, there isn't really a fight and that everyone wants the good for the other and they used to make up. So what we see over here is the, 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 the way that Aharon, uh, um, the approach that Aharon took and the idea that Aharon saw the positive side in every single one, in every single Jew, and he was, he was able to, uh, um, uh, to unite the Jewish people together and, of course, make sure that there'll be only peace. So now this is the other grandfather of Pinchas. So that is why our parish start tells us, you know what, Pinchas, Ben Elazar, Ben Aaron, I can, Pinchas is the son of Elazar, of Aaron, who used to, I have shalom, the right of shalom. He loved peace and he chased peace. Okay, so we've got these two grandfathers and one rumor is that Pinchas had the sense of cruelty, and that's why he killed uh, uh, Zimri, that head of the tribe of Shimon. He saw this opportunity. He saw this timing to act in a cruel way and to kill him, and that's what he did. It wasn't because he, was, he had the sense of uh, positive jealousy. But on the other hand, we have the Torah telling us that, you know what? Pinchas is truly the son of Elazar, who is the son of Aharon, who did it, who did everything uh, uh, in a peaceful way. So who do we follow? <clears throat> who do we follow? Who do we know who's right? And here we can learn a few very interesting ideas to our life as well. First of all, the sense of cruelty that Yisrael had, the grandfather of Pinchas, did not have to do with his nature. It was an act. It was an external act. It was something that he behaved, right? When we try and educate children, we tell them, you aren't bad. Your behavior might be bad. But you do not want to connect the behavior to the person 100% because it might affect him in the wrong way. He'll look at himself and he'll say, you know what? I'm just a bad person and I have no ch chance. And the truth is that that isn't the way to educate children because the best way to do it is separating and telling them you are good. And you always will be good. You have the potential always to overcome this bad behavior. And in that sense, we know that Yisrael, although he did such a bad act, although he was cruel to uh, uh, the goose, but nevertheless, this is just his behavior. It's not who he is. And on the other hand, Aharon, he was a good person. He was a peaceful person. He was a person that made an extra effort to make sure that not only his family would feel uh, peaceful, but actually he would go around and make sure that within the tribes of Am Yisrael, each family would live a peaceful life, a life of shalom. And that's why the true nature that Pinchas has is connected to Aharon who chased Shalom, who was all about peace. This can also teach us something very important, that when we see someone else doing something, 
So sometimes we like to say, you know what? He isn't really doing it out of uh, care to Hashem. or out of, he, He's got some other reason behind that he's doing it. And that, that reason isn't a good reason, isn't a positive reason. That reason is for his own satisfaction, for uh, his own achievements, to boost his own ego. But it's not coming out of pure good. Sometimes as people, you know, we, we sometimes think in that way or talk in that way. This parasha teaches us to judge everyone in a positive way. And even if you might not be doing it in the best positive way, maybe, yeah, maybe it is a sense of cruelty or something like that. But we also know that mitoch shalolishma balishma, that if you do something, might not be lishma, which is for the sake of Hashem, but slowly but surely that person doing it constantly will end up doing it lishma for the sake of Hashem. And we've got to give him a chance. We can't judge him on the first time that he does something and say, you know what, your, um, um, your uh, uh, purpose wasn't pure good. Might be that it wasn't pure good, but we cannot push him away. We cannot judge him because of that. Now, that is a bit about Pinchas in general, who Pinchas was really, who is the person. And we have the reward in our parsha. After we know that Pinchas was such a great person, he really had the sense of positive jealousy. Not everyone has it. Some people say, you know what? I would go outside and however people behave, that's totally okay with me. Pinchas said, I've got to make sure that Hashem's will actually carries out in the world. That's why he had this strong sense. And this is not something that we in our generation hold by. And you can't pretend to, to really have this sense of positive jealousy. Because, you know, today, today it's, it's going outside might be a bit of a challenge. Not everything out there is according to the Jewish uh, way of living. Not always Hashem would be happy. That case, Pinchas. You've got to truly be Pinchas. And if you're not that guy, so then don't even try. <laughs> that was the uniqueness that Pinchas had. And we could see it by the reward that Pinchas actually had, because Pinchas had this very interesting reward. He was rewarded to become a Kohen. Now we know becoming a Kohen isn't something that you could buy. It isn't something that you receive as a reward. It isn't something that you get at a certain age or a certain status. So how did Pinchas receive such a reward? There was once a story about this person that used to always constantly go to the rabbi and tell him, Rabbi, I want to uh, become a Kohen. I want to become a Kohen. I see that they get the first aliyah in shul. I see that they make the special blessing. I want to become a Kohen. And after a few times, the rabbi told him, this is not so simple. Come to me. This, he didn't leave the rabbi. And the rabbi told him, well, tell me, why do you want to become a Koyen? Why are you so uh, interested in this? So the person tells the rabbi, you know what? You know what? My father was a Koyen. My grandfather was a Koyen. My great-grandfather was a Koyen. I also want to be a Koyen. So the rabbi said, in that case, no problem. You're welcome. You don't even need me to make you a Koyen. You are born a Koyen. The whole idea, the whole concept of kahuna is that this is something that you are born with. This is something that you don't achieve, but you get it. So why does Pinchas 
deserve such a reward. He was, throughout the entire Jewish history, he was the only person to become a Kohen suddenly at the age of, I don't know the exact age, but let's say at the age of 40, 45, 50, suddenly Hashem tells you, you know what, you are a Kohen. He was the only person that got it. So the Rebbe explains a very, very interesting idea. We all know, and this is going back to the story of Pinchas, to the idea of Pinchas as uh, uh, what exactly did he do? Pinchas used a higher sense in himself. We all have, um, it's called, we've got five parts to our soul. Nefesh, Ruach, Chaya, uh, ne, um, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. Yechida is the highest level of the Neshama. And often we don't even use that part of the Neshama, right? It's, there's, interesting, uh, there's an interesting saying that people don't use their full potential, even though they might have a huge, huge potential. But technically, sometimes we only use our external koichas, the external powers that we have, the external parts of our nasham. Once we use the highest part of our nasham, the yechida, that part that's truly connected to Hashem, yechida means, uh, it's milashon yechid, single. That single part that is connected directly to Hashem, that is something that is higher than any kind of boundaries, higher than any kind of an achievement. It's not something you work towards. It's not something that you achieve. This yechida, it's all you could express it. It's all you could use it or not. It would be there, but you won't use it. But if you do use it, the reward that you receive is the exact same idea. Giving you this new nature of becoming a koyen. This is something that a person would deserve only if he revealed within himself this idea of a koyen, this bursting love towards Hashem, this positive jealousy where someone says, you know what, let's try and look at it in the best way possible. Pinchas was really caring about Hashem's kingdom, about the world. So this is basically what we could learn from Pinchas. There's stories about many Hasidim in Russia who needed to Moser Nefesh to give their lives to Hashem. And the whole idea of Mesirut Nefesh is connected deeply to this idea of Yechida, that part in the soul that is connected to Hashem with no boundaries and with no limits. So I'm wishing you all a Shavua Tov and looking forward, Bezrat Hashem, seeing you next week on Sunday at 9.15. Shavua Tov.